We are recording and live. Uh, welcome to the John Lavinia Mastermind Group. I'm Jamie Young, my data host. Uh, just a quick uh, rundown on the schedule today. Again, it's uh, Thursday. We have Yoga Basics with Nancy and uh, Lieutenant Colonel Mark Riggle tonight with Global and Tactical Marketing. Uh, Nancy is at uh, 3.30 p.m. and uh, Mark is at 8 p.m. Welcome, everybody. It's good to see everybody. Our master and uh, leader, John uh, Lavinia, is on with us. Adrian, Gail, Mark, Elmer. Susie's here. She haven't seen you in a while. I know. <laughs> Hi, Evelyn. <clears throat> Alexandria, Mandy, Cyril, Kim's on. Caroline. Uh, hope to see some more people on here. Coral. Hi, Coral. Uh, so <clears throat> it looks like Bill's connecting. So today, since we're coming to the end, we were starting to talk about this a little bit before we went live, coming to the end of the year here in a few weeks. And with 2020 being such a you know what show <laughs> from the standpoint of having to deal with what everybody's dealing with with this global pandemic, amongst other things, our life, uh, what we deal with on a day-to-day on -day basis. I thought a good topic today would be stress and the different levels of stress, the causes, areas that we have stress in, the levels, and of course the reducers that are important. Uh, I'm gonna look down once in a while here because I'm, re I'm gonna read some, some definitions and I'm gonna read the definition of stress, which is the body's reaction to any change that requires uh, an adjustment or responses and the body reacts to those changes with physical, mental, and emotional responses. Now, we know in our lives what well, each, each of us have individual areas that cause stress, but, uh, and I'll go through uh, a list, uh, but, but I wanted to talk about briefly, and, I, and I, it's not, uh, it's not gonna be a downer uh, session at all. I just want to go through some some levels, some areas of stress. Actually, what stress does to our body first? I want to talk about that. Can create headaches, muscle tension or pain, chest pain, fatigue, change in sex drive, stomach ulcers, sleep problems, the effects it has on our mood, anxiety, restlessness, lack of motivation or focus, feeling overwhelmed, irritability or anger, sadness or depression, on our behavior, overeating or undereating, angry outbursts, drug or alcohol misuse, tobacco use, social withdrawal, exercising less often. Now we all know, uh, we're very aware of the global pandemic that's going on and the stress that that creates and, and what that brings to our lives. Uh, when we think about our friends and family and loved ones, um, you know, it, it, has, it has its effect on, on, on many things. It's so far reaching, um, you know, there's death, there's sickness. Uh, it affects our lives in other areas. Um, you know, surgeries are, are postponed or canceled. Uh, people who have just uh, everyday illnesses and, and sicknesses and, and what have you that need to be attended to, there's some issues there. there there's, there's, there's problems and stress with that. Things can't get taken care of. The areas in our lives outside of the pandemic, which, you know, I, I talk about that because that's a, I think that's a big blanket that covers everybody. I think the areas of, of other areas of stress is our job, our marriages, our relationships, our, 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 uh, um, for, our, our movement into the entrepreneurial circle, uh, driving a car, uh, cooking dinner. I mean, it, it comes in all different levels and I don't think we're all, I, I, I'm, I'm convinced of it that we don't all realize that there's probably stress in everything that we do. Now, some of it is, it's, it's not mind altering. It's not physically altering. It's, it's just there. It's part of living. And, and so we, we, we take it as we go because it's just, it's just an ordinary reaction to our everyday lives. Um, I, I, I think what we do know, and I think in this group, uh, we, we have a very good handle on 
on how to reduce or relieve the stress. And for me, to relieve stress, one of the one of the most popular things that I have in my life is this call every day at nine o'clock, and the discussions we have and the people that we that we interact with and and how we share our 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 knowledge our our, our interests our beliefs our knowledge our solutions. That's that's a that's a big reliever I think uh, for me. I think I think quite a few people on here will agree that that's the same for them as well. Um, the relievers. I mean, they're all here. They're all, they're all they're all right at our fingertips. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go over about 16 of these that are off of actually uh, a website that's a, um, a the Mayo Clinic, and it starts with exercise. Now, this is not in any particular order, right? You can you can do this in any order that you want. You can do all 16. You can do one or two of them. Whatever whatever helps your life. We can exercise in all forms. We can walk, run, lift weights, uh, get on a get on a Peloton, get on kind of stationary bike, do yoga. That I'll, I'll touch on that as well. But exercise is an important part. Possibly supplements. Uh, you know, for for an example, omega three fatty acids, uh, lemon balm. There's 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 a whole list that I'm not listing here, but those are two examples that that were that were first in line. You can light a candle. Essential oils. You know, is a, is a is a big part in relieving stress. Uh, certainly, re reduce caffeine. I've I've gotten down to two cups a day, preferably both in the morning, so I can be for the rest of the day. Uh, write it down. Ivia talked about journaling yesterday. Uh, write it down. Write down the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, uh, it's 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 the same with uh, uh, talking about it. Right? You get it off your chest. You don't internalize it. Internalizing, I think, as we all know, probably is a big, big uh, origin of stress. Um, <laughs> chew gum. It might, it might, it might uh, create another stress sitting in the dentist chair, but uh, who knows if you don't chew a lot of it. But uh, chew gum. Uh, time with family and friends, especially in this, in this time, right, if you can. The pan pandemic kind of puts a little uh, kibosh on some of that, but, but if you can find a way to be safe and healthy, I think uh, yeah, that's, a, that's a big solution. Time with family and friends. Laugh, don't take yourself so seriously. I think uh, I, I, I do that a lot. I mean, I think, I think you know, I'm, I've never been accused of being mature, but when I need to be, I'll be mature. That's kind of how I look at life. Um, learn to say no, take control of your life. Take a little bit more control in what you actually can do and what you bring into your life. Take on less. Right, one thing at a time. We talked. We've talked about. Uh, John uh, brought this up a couple times. I brought it up a couple times. Others have multitasking. Are you good at it? Is it good for you? Is it something you really want to do when you multitask? I think it brings on a whole lot of other, you know, brings a, brings a lot of mess into your life potentially if you if you if you your plate's too full. Uh, here's another one: avoid procrastination, and it brings to mind John's favorite word in big caps. The word done, right? Procrastinate. You know you got a deadline. You know you need to clean the house. You know you need to get the car serviced. You know you need. You know you know you know you know you know. The more you pile on with that, the the bigger the bigger your stress ball is going to be. I, I'm convinced of that too. Uh, I, I mentioned it earlier. Yoga is is talked about quite extensively on this website. Uh, and gosh, guess what? Nancy's going to hold a class today. Yoga, yoga is a very uh, big piece of, of, of uh, the stress relievers. Practice mindfulness. Stay in the present. Uh, there's several different ways to practice mindfulness according to these, to these uh, experts. Uh, meditation, again, yoga comes up again. There's the mind, mindfulness-based cognitive behavior training, uh, you, you, uh, therapy in, the, in that area. Um, uh, big, big, uh, Another big uh, area where they talk a lot about um, uh, cuddle, physical contact. Use your imagination, uh, big time. They talk about it very extensively, if not as the, more extensively than the rest. Is the physical contact and the positive uh, vibes that you get from that. Uh, uh, however, however you you uh, accomplish that, uh, soothing music in the background. 
this morning I was listening to Italian coffee music, coffee shop music. It was it was it was a light uh, piano. It was violins. It was it was very soothing. I you know, I just discovered it this morning actually, and it's on my favorite list now. So, um, deep breathing, big deep breaths, a lot of them. In with the good, out with the bad. Right? We know that very well. And finally, time with your pet. Do you have pets? We all know the unconditional love that pets give us, uh, how they affect us in our lives, how we can have the worst day in the world and that dog will walk right up to you, wag the tail and look at you like, you're the best in the world. You know what? I, I, uh, I heard somebody say the other day, it's, uh, or maybe it was on here that uh, uh, the, a dog uh, um, ha can have the same meal every day for the rest of its life, but act like it's the first time they ever ate it. Can you imagine that? I love that. I, I, I can't remember if that was on here or if I, I saw that somewhere else, but it's a, a great a great analogy of, of, of that, that type of support that a dog, you know, an animal, any animal can give us, but a dog comes to mind because they seem to be, I've had, I've had dogs in my life. Cats, not so much. They, they just have the mind of their own. Can't put a leash on a cat, so it's not, I'm not too interested in them. Just kidding. Um, anyway, we talk about uh, we talk about stress on here. Uh, um, we, we we talk about how how it affects us, and 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 we we talked about procrastination. I talked about procrastination. We talk about getting getting basically up off our butts and out of our chairs and get and getting things done. Adrian talked about that the other day. You know, getting after it. Um, John talks about it. John talks about it a lot about about how we need to to get past the things that we are, um, that, that, that freeze us. I think stress freezes us quite a bit. I think we, we tend to live in the stress because we feel like that's a, a normal part of our lives and we don't do the right things or do the things to take care of ourselves that, that, that can relieve that stress. I can't, I can't talk enough about that and how, how that tends to lead our life. And, and when it leads our life, I think it's, uh, if it consumes our life, then I think we end up with some of the things I had uh, the effects of stress and, and they can be uh, irreversible. But I think for the most part, everybody on here seems to have a pretty good handle on how to take care of that. I think, uh, I think it was Kim yesterday was talking about uh, uh, her order was on her way in and, and she wasn't sure where it was and it was causing a lot of stress, but, but she overcame the stress by digging in a little bit deeper and, and finding out you know, finding the information in whatever she had in front of her. I think she said she found the tracking information in, in Chinese or I, it was something within an email she got and, and she relieved the stress by, by finding a solution. And, and so that's what I think uh, we're all pretty, pretty good at and better at and, and are teaching ourselves, uh, teaching each other how to take care of that. So I wanna end with, uh, <clears throat> we talked yesterday, uh, <clears throat> John put up the, an acronym for idiot and uh, I, I kind of came up with my an acronym for stress uh, yesterday, just out of the blue. Uh, it, it's it's. Uh, I mean, I think any of us can can take stress and put an uh, make make an acronym out of it. But mine mine I came up with standing to resist each stress successfully. Standing to resist each stress successfully, and you can use those sixteen things I talked about. You can you can use anything that you have uh, come, come in contact with in, in your life to use as a reliever. But I think uh, those 16 are pretty, pretty good, pretty good start. And uh, away we go with life. And um, with that, I'd like to open up the floor to anybody that would like to jump in and, and, and talk about it. Um, well, Mr. Lavinia, number one. Hey, thank you, Jamie. Yes, sir. You know, I have no stress in my life. I'm just uh, floating through the ethers, man. Yeah. You know. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, that wasn't my acronym for idiot yesterday. I didn't. Uh, I didn't give that much honor to that word. Somebody else did. Uh, I put the ID10T error code in there. So that was. Uh, that was my contribution. But um, was that yesterday, I don't even know what day it is. Anyway. It's Thursday. It's the day of Thor. How do I deal with stress? Well, one is something that Nicola helps us with every Tuesday, which is quiet time, meditation, visualization, uh, remembering where I'm going. In other words, I, I may have a ton of activities, 
but as long as I know that they're on purpose and I'm doing on purpose action, they become less stressful. Does that make any sense? Like I could be, be just as busy, in fact, busier. In fact, I can go at warp speed and be totally calm because of the purpose behind it. And I think, I think when I'm, when I'm cross purpose, when I'm, when I'm experiencing intention versus counter intention, that for me is stress. It's certainly inner conflict. It's certainly a, uh, uh, you know, an unsettling uh, state of operation. But if I'm moving at warp speed towards a known goal, overcoming not unknowable barriers, man, I'm, I'm rocking, I'm rocking. Right. So co commingling uh, stillness like meditation with dynamism like work, right, for me is the only experience of, of I, what I would call balance that I can recognize in my life because I am going at warp speed quite often. Now, the less resourceful stress reliever that I've recognized in my life is diversion. So, uh, in fact, you guys, oh my goodness. I am working on the redux of a productivity course, which is going to blow everybody away. Wait till you see this. But I just uh, picked up a tool just in the last 24 hours that is helping me track every minute of my time that I choose to track, right? I'm not going to track my sleep, although I suppose I could. Um, <laughs> but how much time did I spend eating? How much time did I spend cleaning up after my daughter? How much time did I spend doing research okay now research for me means getting on youtube and consuming yes being a consumer consuming content now what's is that better this research it sounds better than watching tv i don't watch tv i don't have tv service what direct tv i haven't paid for tv in i don't know how many years are they even still in business who knows who cares but youtube so does, does that relieve me because i call it research because i'm researching you know uh, antennas for the radio or, you know, new kinds of uh, holsters, you know, or, um, you know, different uh, uh, self-defense techniques or things that I'm interested in, right? Reviews on, uh, or, or um, you know, the drag racing, right? Hey, so-and-so won the top fuel dragster, right? Is that, <laughs> it's a diversion. Now, some of that, I guess, could qualify as research, but so, so could browsing Amazon, that's research, man. That's research. I'm shopping. I'm being a consumer. So for me, that's a bit of a thorn in my side. Yes, it's a stress reliever. The thrill of the hunt that, you know, I get to consume. I get to buy stuff. I get new toys, right? I'm researching new toys. I know a whole lot about toys, man. I can go buy toys now. Um, but does that, is that a worthy stress reliever? I don't know. I'm working on that. And certainly, we've got to have some balance. So again, the word balance comes up for me in my life. We've got to have some, some sort of balance. I deserve a diversion as well. Okay. Uh, and that can be fruitful, certainly, right? I know more stuff than I did before I started browsing YouTube videos, but what didn't I get done? And that's for me, undue amounts of diversion adds to my stress, doesn't take it away. In other words, it's like the drug where, you know, you get the relief, you know, the euphoria and then it wears off and now you're worse off than when you started. So I got to watch that and I'm inconclusive on that, but that's what's coming up for me, Jamie. Thank you for bringing up the, uh, the topic. Sure. Thank you. That's it. Uh... That's some good insight diversions. I, you know, and, but, but you, but, but as I said before, you, you know, overload for me, overload to bring too many diversions in. And I'm all of a sudden, I'm, I, I've said this before, I'm a master of, I'm, not, I'm, I'm a, I'm a jack of all trades and a master of none. And, and that, 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 that causes stress for me when I, I, I can do a lot. Okay. I want to do one thing really, really great. So that's for me. I, real, real quickly, I want to ask everybody with a show of hands, have you ever seen that movie uh, Joy with Jennifer Lawrence? Which is which is the there's a woman it's a woman her name is uh, Joy Mangano she she actually invented the uh, the uh, a mop the miracle mop that would bring it ring itself out it's a great movie her her stress reliever was she she had she went on uh, QVC and sold eighteen thousand mops in twenty minutes when when people didn't believe what she could do and she went on there and did it herself the actor they had on there didn't do it they didn't sell it and she went in and did it herself. Well, after that, and she's got all kinds of stuff going on with her family. She goes out back. I forget where she was, but she went out back and grabbed a shotgun from a guy. It was like a, dry, a shooting range and just shot off around. And just the guy looked at her and goes, you feel better? She goes, and she just dropped her shoulders and went, yes. It was just, it was pretty funny. It's a pretty, uh, pretty emotional part of that movie. Okay, so I'll stop talking. Next up is Mark, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Mark. Let's hear what you got there, big guy. Hey, Jamie, um, the, the comments that you've made this morning um, 
I I feel every one of them, man. It's I have to say that from that point of uh, throughout my life, um, heck, man, I'm my own worst enemy, <laughs> no doubt. Um, and in my early days, uh, of course, I think maybe with age, wisdom, and then just uh, the whole the physical, emotional, mental aspects of life, there comes a point when there are sort of some reality checks that go on and specifically that what I talked to in regards to this, and I made comment briefly to it a day or two ago, was just, uh, you know, I was one of those guys in my early days that did a lot of self-medication sorts of stuff. You know, I, I, I drank a lot. I was, uh, I was a wild guy. And, and boy, you want to talk about adding fuel to the fire. You know, you think that you're You froze on us. You didn't pay your cable bill. <laughs> Let's create bragging rights to it uh, with everybody else that you're doing it with. You know, it's like, uh, and, and it's no, no, uh, I don't think anybody uh, would dispute this, that there was a day um, in my early days, particularly the Marine Corps was known as kind of the drinking club, man. We were just a wild bunch, you know, and uh, but there was a purpose. There was a, there was a reason that we were kind of like that. You know, when you live day to day and and you go to places and you don't know if you're going to live to the next, um, these are these are the kind of the coping mechanisms that go on. But anyway, in life, as I uh, as I became older and the body just didn't function quite as well, things changed, and I looked to other forms of stress relief. I mean, an exercise was, and PT was always a part of that throughout my life. But I do find that um, exercise, the stuff that I do with uh, the with Nicola, the the yoga, this environment here, this has been an absolute godsend for me this last uh, eight months. This morning, thing. this is if if I was to say that I had a real vice right now, this is my vice. Um, and I give it to John and I give it to this family and, and I just can't say that enough. Some people probably think like, wow, you know, yeah, say I'm drinking the Kool-Aid. I'm with a cult. Damn right. I am. Uh, I love what I'm doing. I love where I'm at and I love the people that I'm with. I'm glad that I met you and Sandy and I'm going to meet other people here. This is a great stress reliever for me and it helps set the impetus for my day. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm sorry for the people who are on the other side of the pond that have to look to it later in the day or the evening. I don't know how I would gauge that for myself, but to be able to do it in the morning and then go through the savers, you know, and have that time of silence and affirmation and visualization, et cetera, and go through the, and do the reading and, and, and the book club and all these things. Um, I, I've never done it this way. I've never had this sort of regimentation and, uh, who's the book by the, um, by the, uh, the the Navy SEAL, you know, discipline is freedom. Uh, I'm waiting to get that book. I want to read that book because I do believe, you know, it, with greater discipline in life and putting regimentation in there, it actually opens the door for other things for for you to uh, be able to decide how you put other things in the schedule and do other things. So, uh, and I'm assuming that's kind of where he's going with that. And I'm looking forward to to reading that book and and doing what John said. I used to kind of take a book, read that book, be done with it. Now I have several and I'm just taking snippets as I go to learn and uh, finding that the reading and the continual absorption, um, much like James Allen's As a Man Thinketh, you know, heart, you know, tilling my own emotional, mental, and spiritual garden has been, uh, has been absolutely a game changer for me in life. And I just can't say enough about that. So thanks, man. You're welcome. Thanks. Good, good input. And, 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 and for me also to, this is new to me to do this and the change, um, to change your life at this point, to, to, to look at it in a different fashion is, uh, is huge. And I, I'm, I'm sure for, for a lot of us on here, um, we've got, uh, Cyril next, Elmer, and then Gail, uh, lined up to go. Cyril, what you got? Hi. Hi, 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 Jamie. Uh, hi. A cool topic. Um, this is another interesting one for me because um, I've kind of worked on this for, uh, quite a bit um, in terms of my own stress. Uh, and I just wanted to tweak a few things. And because um, um, there's, it's well known in, um, it's well known from the studies done that actually the act of stroking your pet itself 
will decrease your will will um i can't remember what, what the pointers are but will decrease your stress um decrease your heart rate and um and produce the hormones so it goes further than just having the pet the stroking of your pet will actually do amazing things for you um so that's one i just wanted to add in there um uh, the, the, another one was that something i learned from um uh, my my shows when I was when I was performing a lot doing uh, um, a speciality act I used to meditate to put my mind in the right gear much in the same way uh, uh, an athlete does but um, I would use it um, I would use it exactly that way but I would take an hour going through my 10 minute show I would take the full hour and run through the entire show in my head so that I had every particular piece. And it's an interesting thing. When I learned to do that, when I first started doing that, I actually, because I did a dance competition and um, they, I ended up going on really as one of the last dancers. So in the end, um, because I started meditating, because I knew I really had to bring my stress levels down because I had great, I used to have a lot of stress performing before I went on. It used to really uh, bug me out basically. So, um, so for this show, I changed my, for this, for this competition, I, I changed my approach and I meditated all the time I had before I went on. And it turned out to be about two to three hours before I, so, I, so, and I was so calm. I almost, I, I, med, I meditated for so long. I almost had an out of body experience. Basically when I was doing it, it was like, somebody else talking to me telling me what to do so literally i was seeing myself in apart from myself and it's very interesting it was i was completely distressed i mean absolutely completely distressed um uh and i was just in charge just directing myself almost from above and the other thing was that even that even uh underlines that is when they were about to uh um say who who had won um, I, I remember standing there looking at uh, the presenter at the time and thinking, oh, she's smiling at me. I think I've won. <laughs> no emotion. <laughs> it didn't really hit me till afterwards that, uh, that that's what had happened. That, that literally I didn't, I, it literally took ages for it to really sink in that I'd won it. I was just so relaxed. It didn't hit. So I would say if you, but I must admit, I don't, I don't use music and stuff meditation because i the act my part of my meditation is to is to i use a particular uh, um quite simple one where part of it is having a affirmation and having your affirmation sorry no sorry what am i talking um oh, i've forgotten the word for it the the words you you speak over and over is your word your mantra um, and then you having using my affirmations, but also when a thought comes into my head to allow the thought to go through and allow myself to think through ideas that might help solve that problem, if it's, if it's a problem, and not to uh, use um, if questions, let, leave if questions unanswered. Um, because um, I have a particular theory that I came up with years ago for myself, having watched my mother and other people around me. And um, I call it mind management. And, uh, and it falls in, part of it falls into the, um, uh, what is it called? Uh, mindfulness um, idea in that people often wind themselves up really i see it, they i see them do it to themselves all the time and one of the ways you do that and i mentioned it before is the if question an unanswered if question will basically tear your unconscious mind apart because it because you're not giving it a chance to work out how to how to uh solve the problem so um so by if and it and the idea is that um, from my mind management point of view is that basically if you have an if questions you brainstorm and it doesn't matter how silly the answer is is that it's just another one on a list to have a look at that's all it is it's just a list of ideas for you to look at later and all you're doing is and by doing that listing ideas of how might to be able to um 
solve a problem enables your unconscious mind to relax because you've then got a number of things you can think through as answers to that question. But by, by saying no to an idea too quickly, first of all, you stop the brainstorming from working, functioning properly. Um, and so it doesn't matter how silly the idea is as long as you do it. Um, um, that's just one area. But um, so basically how you talk to yourself is really important. I mean, a lot of you, a lot, a lot of you guys know already. But the other thing I, I found was that um, that I think a lot of people here here are doing any already is how you organise your life. Literally, um, a lot of people are stressed because of the way they organise their life. Um, Sometimes, often it's the job they do, but um, but does your life have to be that way to? because you can make your life less stressful. I must admit, I could actually probably do a little bit more stress in my life. I'm gonna be trying to make my life a little bit more stressful anyway. But, and also the other side of that coin is that stress is actually good for you as well, but it's to a particular level. So you, um, so stress, because to be honest, if you don't have any stress, then that tends to have a negative effect because a human beings tend to need something to uh, push against to, to a large degree they've found. So, um, Yes, so that, that's my uh, 10 cents worth. Thank you. Well, thanks, Cyril. That, that's a lot. That's a lot and, and a lot of good, really a lot of good stuff. And I, and I go back to the, your comment about uh, having your pet and stroking your pet and reducing your, your heart rate or, or as Ingrid does, drive around with your puppy in your lap. I don't know if anybody caught that uh, picture of, of her little puppy in her lap. That was pretty funny, pretty cute. Uh, okay, so we have Elmer next, Gail, and then Therese. What you got, Elmer? Hey, Jamie. Thank you for the conversation today. I mean, it, it's so apropos. I mean, um, I mean, uh, like I think it was the other night. I actually had a nightmare and actually woke up, and that was the first time in a long time that I had a nightmare. It was just about work. So, um, I mean, this conversation couldn't be more timely. Um, I think like, uh, you know, so many people deal with stress in different ways. And I think one of the main things that I find that has worked for myself is um, just being mindful and just acknowledging the stress. Because sometimes we don't acknowledge the stress or we try to push it behind and still go through our motions and everything like that. And, um, you know, thankfully, you know, Hung San is here. And I think the moments where our, I don't just try and hold it into myself and bottle it up, the moments where I actually tell her, oh, God, hon, I'm, I'm stressed, like, just like, I think that's when the sort of healing process of trying to deal with the stress starts happening, is that if we allow ourselves to acknowledge that we are stressed, then we can actually deal with it. And, um, you know, talking to like what Mark had mentioned about this group, I mean, just hearing everyone's voices is so calming and, you know, trying to jump on this time with, you know, the energy that everyone puts out is really helpful and to that to that part of just sounds I, I mean I don't know how many other people do this and your list was so long that you know just playing music or having a playlist for any encouragements or whether it's inspiration or you need energy or you need a pick-me-up like you know that's what Hung San and I have started doing just making a playlist of things that would you know achieve those effects and that's also been sort of helpful you know, especially, you know, and, and just to, just acknowledging and allowing ourselves to say that we're stressed is just yep. the start. So yep. thank you for the conversation. Yep. Yep. Thanks for your input. I, it, you're right. It, it, the first, the first thing you say is I, I'm stressed. It opens up the dialogue and that's, uh, that's the, that's the green light for somebody to say, well, let's talk about it and for them to listen and for you to get it off your chest. And as we, as I said, you know, that's or jour writing it down journaling. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Good, good insight. Gail is next, and then Therese. Hi, Gail. Hi. Uh, thanks very much again for your uh, presentation. Every day, there's uh, these things seem to build on each other, and they're wonderful for all of us. Um, about the dogs and the cats. Cats. I, I'm a cat person. I have a <laughs> dog now, but I've had cat cat cats all my life and uh, the last two that I had one of them would even come sleep on my pillow and start grooming me 
um, and would want to be loved and everything. So, so they, they do show love too, although they are more independent than dogs. <laughs> I knew I knew I'd insult somebody with that comment, but I, I grew up with cats. It's, it's dogs not an insult, but <laughs> I, know. Um, I grew up with cats and animals and dogs and yeah. <laughs> and the other, you know, um, with meditation, when I lived in Hong Kong, my husband, uh, who was a chef, worked for one of the biggest hotels at the time. This was in the early 70s. And he was very busy. And even when he was at home, it didn't matter what time of the day or night, um, there were seven restaurants in the hotel and he would get calls and, and all that sort of stuff. And I worked for the Holiday Inn and I was opening um, a restaurant and a deli for them. So I was very stressed out too. And um, my husband decided that we were going to learn to do transcendental meditation, which we did two times a day. And we discovered we needed less sleep uh, we had more energy, the stress levels went down, and we kept on doing it until one time my husband decided he, he had this experience where all of a sudden there's this white, bright light that enveloped him, and he was scared, and he, he stopped, and he said, I'm messing with my mind. I'm never going to do it again. And I've since heard that that's the level people want to get to, um, but he didn't. Uh, he did, but didn't like it. So we never did it again, but I still know my mantra from that time in the 70s, um, and it really did help with a lot of things. For me, one of my biggest stresses later especially later on in life was learning to say no um you know and i've i've always um been able to didn't matter what sort of job i had i would start at the bottom and, and work my way quickly to you know a, a leading position and um i remember being told oh if you want to get something done ask a busy person and I was one of those people. And it got to the point where I was so stressed out and I was um, wanting to be the best at everything I did. And, oh, yeah, I can do more and more and more and more until one day my husband took me aside and he said, Gail, you know, I know you're happy to be back in the working because I took time off when my kids were growing up. He said, but, you know, you still have a family and you still need time for your family. So I slowly learned to say, no, I can't do it. And to stop some of the other things that I had been doing. So my stress level went down. My biggest, procrast uh, biggest uh, stress thing today is procrastination. And I think that's for a lot of us. But I, you know, I look at so many things and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And I'm still fighting to get through that. So if somebody can teach me how to not procrastinate, I would love that. But anyway, thank you very much. Thanks, Gail. Thanks for your input. Sorry for the cat comment. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. I just, I had a lot I of cats. I and hoping. I was just going to say, I was hoping and hoping my dog wouldn't bark because just before <laughs> I came on, he was upstairs barking at somebody really uh, loud. And I thought, oh, no, <laughs> but he didn't. Well, we would, we would have made you bring him onto the, onto the uh, screen. Oh, uh, it would take forever. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Therese is up next. And then Cyril is going to come back on a with some more, I think, uh, Therese, and, and actually we don't have any other hands. Anybody else wants to jump in, please do so. But Therese is next. Hi, Therese. Good morning. Um, good evening. Hello, everyone. Nice to be here. Thanks, Jamie. A great topic again. Um, you know, bringing us kind of back around um, and present with ourselves and things that we deal with every day. I mean, I think we all, we all deal with that. We push ourselves probably a little too hard. Um, I think even when we procrastinate, that creates stress because we are procrastinating. How do we get off of that, you know, that game square? Um, for me, I think it's always about balance. Um, 
I will push myself. And then when I, when I bring too much on the plate is when I get out of balance and it creates anxiety. And then it puts me into um, a place that's really difficult to get off. And it's a, not a good, it's a dark place for me. So um, I think, you know, my journey has just been about learning that, you know, how many plates can I spin at the same time? So um, again, being mindful, acknowledging it, um, and that takes practice and that takes discipline. Um, I think, you know, I found exercise um, as one of my competitive or, you know, combative tools um, many years ago, Pilates and yoga, and then, you know, becoming educated in nutrition really helped me um, with my issue, which is, you know, the root of that is a lot of things, but one of which is anxiety. And um, so, yeah, I mean, and I do get stuck in procrastination sometimes. And I think my tool for that is step away. Um, I, I do pointillism. And I think for me, um, finding my center again is stepping away from this computer, stepping away from the list of to do's um, and shifting your mind to a different, you know, a, a different place allows you to move beyond that stressful spot or that procrastination spot. So I think also finding um, tools that work to help you get beyond that stress, you know, stay present. Um, I actually just this week, I, I mentioned this a long time ago to, to uh, everyone here, and I think it was maybe a month ago, about trying to find time for creativity again. Um, and I think what that took for me, because I, I said it, and then like two or three weeks went by, and I was like, okay, well, you have to pull some stuff out of the cabinet, you know, pull the pens out, pull the paper out, and let it be there. And when the spirit comes around, you'll start doing it. And so it just sort of happened last week. And I mean, it, it can be 10 minutes, it can be 15 minutes, but then all of a sudden it allows me to refocus um, my mind on what I'm doing um, and kind of releases the stress. So anyway, thought I'd share my, my tool and my tip. And so anyway, thanks everyone. And Thank I love you. cats. I love cats, Jamie, sorry. <laughs> well, I said in a comment that when I was growing up, I had, we had six cats in the house and I was a primary caretaker. So maybe it's, it's a reverse. You have PTSD from cats. Oh, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I love cats, but I think I, I, my time is done with with. That's uh, a lot of cats, though. So I, I yeah, yeah, yeah. I got my mother to blame for that. Uh, yeah, your your I, I loved your some of your solutions. Uh, my daughter and I have a rule in the house here from, from a standpoint of procrastination, where we can't if there's something that's out of place, like a pair of shoes on the stairway or something on a countertop, we're not allowed to walk past it twice without putting it in its right place. So when we don't, we're allowed to penalize the other, like, you know, in, in a very, very fun and, and light way. But uh, we, we, we do, uh, we keep each other accountable. Um, That's nice. Thanks, yeah, It's fun. We make it fun. We make it fun. So Cyril is up again, and he's our last hand up. And if anybody else would like to jump in, please do so. But uh, Cyril's the last uh, hand up. Cyril, what you got? Hi, guys. I, I just wanted to add a couple other things. Um, the, the the striking of pets and so on is so powerful that it, I, in the UK, it's used as a therapy in places like hospitals and, well, not necessarily so much hospitals, but definitely things like care homes. They take pets in for people to stroke and so on um, to help them de-stress in many ways. Um, just that's just a side <clears> one. <throat> um, I think a lot of people overlook how much coffee really is a toxin in the system. Um, and if you're, if you're used to drinking a lot of coffee, just because you're used to it, doesn't mean to say it's not having an effect you haven't necessarily realized that is there. Um, I mean, the, the, a lot of people have, some people have trouble with how they react to coffee and that they get palpitations. But another area of it is that it, it, it can make um, muck around with your thinking to some degree as well if you're having large amounts of coffee because um, it can make it makes it can make some people a bit manic and they don't realize they're doing it so basically instead of where they would be calm about a particular subject they'll start overthinking things and so on so coffee is a really interesting one I mean I love the taste of coffee but I have a caffeine problem so I have to really limit myself which has been a good thing as well 
Um, so I can only take maybe one or, um, one or two cups of a low caffeine coffee. So, but I do like a nice one. Um, and the other one actually that really helped me was I read something about procrastination. And I found that it was defined as an as not one thing, but a number of things, because it defined it. The, the ones that the bits I remember are that there's a creative procrastination that is absolutely positive, because the idea of the creative procrastination is that is that basically your mind needs time to. Uh, Put, it, put its thoughts together, so, so to speak. Your unconscious mind needs the time to mull over the idea you're toying with before you put pen to paper or whatever it is. So, um, which actually helped me a lot because, um, and then it, it enabled me to split the difference between when I procrastinate and not doing something I know I should be doing, which is the one you guys have been talking about a lot. Um, but it separated out that kind of procrastination when you're trying to, think of a way to solve a problem so that so it's a it's a problem solving thing as well as being creative so um i think s separating those two ideas is really useful um i um and i found it so anyway i mean i still uh, have to uh, and i'm getting slightly better at, at at not allowing myself to procrastinate but um because i because i used to be so bad when i was younger really i would put things off and put things off and put things off and um and then suffer the pain of the results of that as well so um so i think the uh, getting it done and I, th I think that idea you you just came you, you just said jamie about uh, not walking past it twice is a great <laughs> idea i have done that in the past but i need to, I need to start doing it again because i forgot about it thank you Cheers, mate. Great topic. Yep. Thanks. Yeah, we you know, figured it's. I'm always going to be a procrastinator. I think I, I've, I've <clears throat> reasoned that with myself. So I figured if I put some blinders, not blinders, but I put some parameters on it, then I, I can get at least get a little bit better at it. So, actually, actually I find um, Ingrid put up the five second rule. I actually find the five second rule doesn't work for me. <laughs> Apart from occasionally, it really doesn't because I think it's because I'm so used to, I'm so used to using. I remember when I used to do acrobatics for a while. I, um, for, because I, and because when I was dancing, you have to do things on both sides, physically do things on both sides, to be able to do it. So what I think what that did is that it actually kind of paralleled up my brain a little bit more than the average. I think in some ways. So it, well, at least on a few to, in a few areas at least. Anyway, so I find counting backwards from one to five is not going to do it. <laughs> Just food. <for, laughs> anyway, that's me. Yeah, just just with food. I think if uh, I think if you uh, take care of something you procrastinated on in five seconds, you didn't procrastinate. In my view, <laughs> it's it's something that's uh, you've left out, you've left on the table, on the floor, uh, on your list of things to do for much longer than five seconds. Um, well, it's uh, it's uh, nine forty eight, uh, uh, my time, uh, ten minutes to the hour, and uh, we have no more hands up. Anybody else have anything else they'd like to? Uh, throw in here and uh, contribute before we sign off. No, going once, twice, sold. Well, have a great day. Have a great rest of your week. We'll see you tomorrow. I don't think I'll be on that. I have a, I have a standing commitment every Friday. Got, Thank you very much. Bye. Okay, we'll yeah. see you again. Thanks, Jamie, thanks, everybody. Thanks see you tomorrow, lot. hopefully. Somebody. See you tomorrow, hopefully. Thanks, Bye, guys. Guys. Bye. Thank you very much. Really good, Jamie. Bye. Yeah. Thanks. Bye.